Hello, hello. Welcome to the Asian Dating Podcast. Today, I have a very special guest. Her name is Miyoko Ohashi, and Miyoko runs a matchmaking and dating service in San Francisco. She yeah. moved to the U.S. <laughs> at the age of 18 and has built her life and business here for more than 20 years. So over 20 years, she has been meticulous in cultivating relationships and building connections that help her business to thrive. Miyoko mainly helps Asian women, Japanese women specifically as well, and men of all ethnicities to help them find the one. So Miyoko, welcome to the show. And, you know, thank you so much for being here. How are you? Good, good. Hi, May. Thank you for, you know, inviting me and... <laughs> Thank you for this opportunity. Opportunity. Yes, yes. Um, so tell me a little bit about how you got started in matchmaking and, you know, the people you serve and tell me a little bit about your business. Okay, I started. It's kind of interesting, sort of, when I was actually uh, on the airplane one day, flying back from Japan to the United States uh, in, the, like, you know, in a airline magazine and there was an advertisement about uh, dating service like a matchmaking service and I thought it was very very interesting and when I arrived in the uh, Bay Area then I was actually looking for a job then I see that company was looking for new uh, matchmaker and I applied for it and I got hired since then I'm working as a matchmaker and unfortunately, that company went under. And after that, because I loved it, this job so much, and my uh, ex coworker started, you know, building up another matchmaking service, and she kind of, you know, asked me to join. Then where I am right now, so my company's grow, grow matchmakers. <laughs> I love the name. I love the name. How did you come up with the name Glow Matchmakers? Our slogan is. Let your love glow with us. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Very good. Very good. So, I mean, you've been, uh, you've been in the business for um, quite a while, kind of like me. We're both experienced matchmakers and you work a lot with uh, the Japanese women. And mm -hmm. tell me what age range of Japanese women do you work with and who you have the most success with? Okay. Like, you know, most successful age range would be about 30 through 40 but I have a youngest member who are in the mid 20s and uh oldest <laughs> uh ladies were in the early 60s and there is you know a few ladies who are in their late 50s or 60s also got married through us and for that guys wise I one of the oldest uh my client was 80 years old <laughs> he got married through us Actually, this year, I mean, last year, 2022, it was, you know, very success, successful. There is like, we made about five marriage and yeah. two engagement. Nice. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Yeah. So the uh, men that you work with, what are they looking for in an Asian woman? What are they looking for in the Japanese uh, partner? Uh, everyone is different, but, you know, Usually, uh, my male member has some kind of, you know, connection in Japanese culture, sort of. Like, you know, they used to work for a Japanese company and or they lived in Japan before or so stuff like that. And or they even have a friends or they used to have a Japanese girlfriend and they really had a good connection with Japanese culture. So that's how they decided to find Japanese wife for them. Right. So, mm -hmm. and do the men uh, speak Japanese or not really? No, not necessary. Most of my female members speak pretty good English. So, okay. okay. And your Japanese uh, female members are they in the U.S. or majority of them are in Japan? Oh, both. Okay. I have members in the United States, especially in the Bay Area, but I do have members in Japan or other countries as well. Okay, good, good. So what are some of the stereotypes that you've come across being in this line of work that you found uh, is true about Japanese women? True about Japanese women. 
Mm, like a what sense? Um, any kind of typical stereotypes that maybe men find the reason to seek out Japanese women. And you're like, okay, I understand why you're pursuing Japanese women because yes, we are this, you know, like what are some things that、um, you find are stereotypes and that are actually true?、Mm, I guess, like, you know, people say we are not as verbally not. As straightforward, we are more kind of come across softer, sort of. So, let's say if when they fight, you know, they don't really push the button, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> trying to, you know, avoid big clash. Okay.、Uh, so, like the most important things so for Japanese is more like harmony. So, we are trying to avoid. Uh, like an uncomfortable situation. Okay.、And、so I think that's what、uh, a lot of、uh, our male m e m b e r is looking for. Okay. That's good. That's, I mean, I'm probably sure that my husband which wishes that I am not a very conflicting person and I believe in harmony. And、uh, yes and no. I mean, I guess I, I don't really like. Confrontation, either, but I'm also I'm Chinese,、mm-hmm. um, but I'm also not afraid to、uh, speak my mind. And plus, you know, I'm born here, so I'm an ABC, right? American born Chinese.、Mm-hmm. So I think my husband wishes that I was more quiet and harmonious, but I'm kind of not. So, <laughs> but、um, okay, that's a good, but that's a good stereotype, right? I mean, I think majority of the men who come to me as well. With my Asian dating service, and not just specifically Japanese or specifically Chinese, is that、uh, the men are looking for Asian women who come to me because they think the values and the traditions are more important.、Um, and they like the Asian culture, you know, not just the Asian food or the Asian countries, but actually the、um, family oriented aspect. So,、yeah. I、um, hear that a lot. <laughs>、yeah. I know, I know.、Mm-hmm. I mean, I, my husband is Caucasian and、um, I don't mind doing laundry. I don't mind cooking for him. I don't mind, you know, doing stuff around the house, going grocery shopping. And、mm-hmm. I know I even do his laundry. You know, I do the laundry for both of us, but I know some of my friends are like, why are you doing his laundry? Like, he can cook one day a week, but. Mm-hmm. Actually, no, I, I do all that stuff because A, I think I should maybe, or I kind of enjoy it. I mean, I guess it's nice if he would do it too, but、mm-hmm. I don't mind doing those traditional things.、Um, what about you? What are you like in your、uh, home lifestyle? Oh, I like to do a lot of you know, cooking stuff like that too. So I really don't mind,、yeah. but you know, I ex- expect other person that's at least, you know, Try. Right.、So、it doesn't feel like, you know, only I am doing everything for you know, another person, right? So, but, you know, there's funny things、uh, talking about harmony.、Um, like at my grandma's age, it was more, much, much more old fashioned、uh, group.、Mm-hmm. There's like interesting things I heard is like,、uh, why have you ever heard like a Japanese traditional woman walks? Three steps behind the man. No,、husband. tell me about that.、Uh, you never heard it? Like、no. in a Japanese, you know, woman is walking three steps behind the man. Most of the people think because, you know, Japanese women are respecting a husband or that kind of image, right?、Mm-hmm. But this wide,、uh, wise old Japanese、uh, grandma told me that we walk、mm-hmm. three steps behind the man because it is. Easier to control a man from the behind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. No, so, no.、Okay. so she said, you know, something like, you know, she, you know, you don't have to, you know, sit on a passenger seat. And if you start having a, you know, argument, then they both gonna, you know, crash in the right. car, right? right? But you know, she is smart enough to step out from the car and going back of the car using the remote control. And let him, let him believe he is driving,、right. but he is actually you know, using the remote control. Okay, go right there, left there, 
you know, sometimes it might be just scratch a little bit, but it's not going to crash. So right. oh, <laughs> when I heard that, I thought, oh, that's actually a pretty good method. <laughs> so, um, do women walk three steps behind men in Japan or no? No, that would be a long time ago. Okay. Okay. So, All yeah. right. No, not these days. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's very interesting. I always felt like when I was in my twenties or growing up, mm -hmm. I didn't think cooking was that important. And mm -hmm. as I've gotten older, you know, in my thirties, uh, forties and now fifties, cooking is so important. I feel like if there's one thing a woman should learn or be open-minded to learning, is cooking, whether it's cooking for yourself, cooking for your boyfriend, cooking for your family, like that is such a monster um, talent or habit to have or skill that yeah. they should probably teach that in high school and college and graduate school. Like they should be teaching cooking everywhere. So yeah. Are you a good cook? Uh, people say I am. I think I am, you know, pretty average. So <laughs> But, you know, he, you know, said a lot of nice things. So, but interesting things in Japan, we actually learn how to cook. Like it's not like you know, every day, you know, school things. It may be like, you know, once or twice of the whole year. Sometimes, you know, they put those program. So it doesn't matter like a girl or a boy. So we all, you know, cook how to, you know, cook in a class. Right. And, and also we clean up the uh your classroom every right. day. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I've yeah. seen um some of the sports sporting events where oh, the Japanese mm -hmm. audience would clean up after themselves after mm -hmm. a concert or after a uh you know a game or something like that. I mean talk about the difference in cultures, right? Like we've <laughs> Yeah, it's just so mind boggling, but so respectful and so necessary. I wish it was kind of like that in the US. Um, yeah, that's so do you keep a very tidy house? I mean, do all Japanese women keep a tidy house like a clean house? Like what is that just a stereotype? Or I think, you know, it is also stereotype stereotype. And but I do think Japanese has a higher standard. Yeah. About cleanness. Yeah. yeah. I like that. I feel like, uh, so during COVID, you know, all the germs and wearing a mask and all that stuff, I felt like I was trained for COVID my whole life. Like I wash my hands all the time. I'm a germaphobe. I don't share drinks with strangers or friends. I mean, I barely share a drink with my husband, but it's like, I feel like I was training for COVID my whole life. Um, <laughs> yeah, before we started recording, uh, I was talking to Miyoko and I I, ha I think I got COVID twice, but it didn't, didn't affect me in any way. I don't have any long-term effects or anything like that. But, um, but yeah, I was just thinking back on how clean, like people clean up stadiums after the events. And that's just so amazing. That's awesome. Um, yeah, anyway, go on, go on. Didn't mean to interrupt you. No, 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 no. Okay. So, but you know, I see that a lot too, especially, you know, we just, you know, finished the World Cup. I hear that yeah. a lot. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So. That's awesome. Okay. So, uh, what else is, are your men looking for in a Japanese partner? Um, what kind of women do they find appealing and what keeps your business running like for 20 something years? Mm, again, like you know, everybody has, you know, different, you know, uh, preference. Right. So, but uh, there is sometime uh, like a Japanese, when you think of it, like, you know, Japanese women's a home body and actually my female members are not like that. So okay. they come to me because they have a good career, good education, and, you know, uh, makes, you know, pretty good income. Mm -hmm. They are very uh, independent emotionally and financially. And those uh, type of the girls are not necessarily popular among uh, Japanese men uh, because 
uh, still in Japan is still like a traditional uh, mindset and not necessarily women have to stay home and you know being housewife most of the women start walking but Japanese man doesn't want to hard to walk as much as him so like you know she should be supporting him so it's supposed to be supporting income but not main income so but my female members you know worked very hard to uh get that position so but now they feel like you know Japanese guys are not appreciating what she has done but uh non Japanese men especially American men likes all those uh values you know uh hard working you know good career good education so that's why our female members come to me to meet not like a old fashioned Japanese guy who they usually meet you know around them so and but still, I kind of mentioned it to you, uh, they seem kind of much, much stronger compared to Japanese standard. They are very uh, strong will type of the girls. But when they come to this country, they are not, does not appear like a strong woman <laughs> still. So I think so that would be good balance right. for to American men, they are not that like very, very strong, doesn't uh, appear as a very strong. So they are still like, you know, uh, respectful and also um, like, I talked to you about harmony. So right. they see that. So, but not as uh, like, you know, uh, as quiet or like a do everything for men type of the girls. Right. I think, you know, my girls and American guy has a very, very good uh, combination, I think. Yeah, but yeah I, I have been working with Miyoko for many, many years now. And I know we partner up and we set up our clients together. So I feel like Japanese women are very highly sought after in my world, too. Like a lot of my men who sign up with me want to date Japanese women, Chinese women, Korean women. Uh, those are my top three, I guess, that men generally would like. And of course, beautiful Thai women, Vietnamese, Filipinas. Like, I'm a fan. I mean, I kind of fell into the business, um, the niche of Asian women kind of accidentally because, A, I'm Asian as well. And I find that more and more men come to me and they're like, hey, I want to date an Asian woman. And so that started the two Asian matchmakers. But um, I feel like it is a very, very uh, great partnership with the mm -hmm. Japanese women and the men. And I think the men like that. So not to mention that Asian women, I feel like age very, very well. I mean, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of times I have women that come to me, they're in their 40s and they look like they're in their 30s. You know, know, like it's just so yeah. great. Like it's um, especially if men are picky with age, but because they want the women to look young, like you should go after Asian women because, you know, they hold their age very well, their youth very well. So, yeah, ex that's great. That's great. So the uh, Asian women that you work with, the Japanese women, would you say that majority of them are educated, like they're college educated, make good money, make good jobs, and they're very open to relocating to the Western culture, open, very open to relocating to the U.S.? Oh, yes, yes. I mean, yeah. I have already members in here who lives here, but, you know, someone who are still in Japan, yeah, they choose to my service because they are all that. And like yeah. I mentioned it to you, those type of the girls are not popular or they, they cannot share the uh, same type of the value with local Japanese guy. Yeah. So, so that's why they come to me. And also, I, I want to kind of say, um, you know, Japan is one of the leading, leading nation country. You know, we are not that, you know, uh, different uh, about level of the lifestyle in the United States and Japan is not that much difference. So a lot of 
uh, people sometimes wonder, like, you know, because some Japanese girl want to get married to American guy to get green card or married up, you know, but it's not necessary. Like, uh, my members are not uh, looking for, like, I guess, married up uh, right. type of the lifestyle or anything like that, but because they already do have a pretty good lifestyle, they don't have to come to the United States, but they are looking for real, you know, love who appreciate who they are and yeah. you know, someone who has similar uh, values. So that's why they mm. want to come to my service to right. meet uh, those gentlemen right. who appreciate about their background. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So what are um, some things that you find that the Japanese women are looking for in the men, but they're not being reasonable? Like, do you find that you have to talk to the women and say, well, you know, are you, you know, is it an income that they're looking for, a salary they're looking for, or a certain height they're looking for? Like, what are some things that you find the women are not being so realistic when it comes to finding a partner in the U.S.? Again, everybody has, you know, their own things. You know, right. Some people say, you know, I like some tall girls. One of the tall girls, they want to look for the uh, non-Japanese men because, you know, she is very tall. She mm -hmm. feels giant in Japan. Right. So that's why they come to here and looking for someone who was much taller than her, yeah. you know, something like that. So, or everybody has their things, you know, someone who makes more than she does, or, um, I mean, looks is very important for some of them. So, like the most uh, difficult challenge was before uh, one of the women who are almost like, you know, uh, 40, and she is looking for someone younger than her, and she wants to have a uh, family. So then she she's really hurry up. So, but she's looking for someone younger than her. So that is one of the challenging part. But you know, she's not typical. Uh, that is not typical Japanese request. Right. So it. So I, did you have any luck with her then if she's 40 and looking for someone younger to have uh, kids with? Like, are you still searching for her or? Yes, I am. So it okay. is changing, but you know, I'm working for her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so was like, you know, uh, she is looking for someone who speaks fluent Japanese and he is not. Uh, oh. You have to be American, doesn't have to be Japanese. So I thought that was very challenging. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is challenging. I mean, what are the odds of that? Um, okay, so what are some of your challenges that you deal with um, in the 20-something years that you've been doing matchmaking in your business? Mm, I would say... Guys are just, you know, always judging women by just looks or age, <laughs> you know. You know, before they hesitate, they just should, you know, meet and talk and, you know, find out if there is chemistry. Just don't judge by the age, you know. Something that's what I really want to say. <laughs> what uh, what age range do you think uh, a woman should be open to um, and vice versa? Like, what is the window that you feel like people need to search between about you know 10 years 10 years older and 10 years younger mm -hmm. i would say so okay yeah. okay How so about that's you? your rule what do you of thumb think? what's that what do you think um well my husband and i are 10 years apart so i think 10 years younger and 10 years older but i feel like the older you get the more options are open to you right like if you know i'm in my 50s and I should be open to someone 10 years older and uh, someone 10 years younger. But I get it. If people want children, you know, then that changes everything. But if you're not looking to have kids, like this is your second marriage or this is your second chance at love, then just be open, you know, 10 years younger, 10 years older. And for women, I know 10 years younger is a lot. So maybe five years younger. Uh, and 10 years older. So give yourself like that 
15 year window, I think that's more than uh, realistic. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're not looking to have kids, then it could be 10 years younger or, you know, a little bit older. And for guys too, I feel like men um, shouldn't just look at the number, they should look at a photo. That's why it's so important that if you're doing online dating or working with a matchmaker to have recent photos that you can say, hey, I took these three months ago. This is what I look like. So if I get like a dollar for every woman that says, oh, I look younger than my age, it's like, OK, well, let the men be the judge, you know, tell the men that these photos were taken at a certain time and that they were not filtered, you know, that they're not edited. Like these are unedited photos or these are lightly touched up. I really look like this. You know, I just feel like there's um there's a way to convey how great you look, but just let the men decide, you know, just show your recent photos. And um, I don't understand when people submit five or seven year old photos to me. And they say that, oh, I look the same. I look the same as I did seven years ago. No, you didn't. <laughs> no one looks the same as they did last year. You know, you look at yourself in the mirror every day. Mm -hmm. So you don't think you've aged. But yeah, when someone looks at you seven years ago to now, you do look different. I mean, you might still look great, mm -hmm. but you can't submit old photos like that and say you look the same, right? Yeah. Especially if you are, you know, looking for a partner, you have to meet that person, you know, time over the point, right? <laughs> and if you are using two great looking photo, can you actually meet that person? You know, I hear that all the time. Yeah. People who comes to my service, they usually go through the online dating service, you know, yeah. then they are so tired of it and right. then come to me and they usually say, you know, I just wasted, you know, my time for a whole year because she or he does not, you know, looks very, very different, you know. Yeah. Um, some people said when finally they meet at the coffee shop, they couldn't find each other right. because they look so different. Right. So I I mean, all the time. Yeah. I mean, if there's one person that says your photos need to be updated, then it's true. Like, yeah, I, I agree. Um so what is one uh, dating tip you can give to the audience listening that would be very, very valuable for them to find love in 2023? What do you think that is? Something something valuable that you can leave them? I really want to say this sounds corny, but, you know, that looks is not everything. You know, you just really have to get to know the other person, like, you know, uh, like uh, if you are looking for partner, like a future partner, you really have to look into who she is or who he is, you know, not just surface part, not necessarily how much money he makes, how she looks, you know, uh, just looks wise, just, you know, have to find, you know, core of that person. So that's what I would say. Do you advise your clients, um, how many dates do you advise them to go on to really learn about them? It's, I would say at least three times. Okay. So, and especially during the COVID uh, because uh, people couldn't meet in person. And I thought sometimes it helps a lot to learn each other mm -hmm. without getting, you know, physical you know, uh, involved us physically, you know, once you get in, uh, like a physically, then a lot of things get confused, you know, <laughs> don't you think like, you know, you cannot really see the other person sometimes. So especially, you know, uh, that would be like higher risk for women as well. So like somehow guys, you know, start losing the interest once, you know, they, get involved physically i hear that all the time yeah uh you know especially online dating uh field you know so but my service i'm very very harsh type of the matchmaker i keep telling him no 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 it's too early don't do that you know so respect to men like that so 
do you <laughs> advise them to go out on X amount of dates before they get intimate? Like, do you advise when she should be open to kissing him? You know, is there a certain date that you think, okay, a kiss is good or, okay, uh, they could get intimate um, and get physical. Like, do you feel like there's like a number um, or number of hours that they're dating or the number of date or just go by their gut feeling like, okay, I want to sleep with this person, then, then go for it. Like what, what advice, advice would you give people? I would just, you know, advise different things because, the, you know, everyone is different. So mm -hmm. I consult with each my members and I usually listen both sides of the stories. So sometimes mm -hmm. I said, you know, you should wait, especially I tell gentlemen, like, you know, you know, don't, try to be rushed into it, then you're gonna brew it, you know? So right. just, you know, take our time and then makes her feel more comfortable. Again, depend on the who she is and who he is. Right. Because I know uh, everyone more like, you know, personal level, I know what she's comfortable and he's comfortable, so. Right. True, so, true. Yeah. So, I, uh, yeah. I remember when I was dating back in the days and I would have friends that would say, oh yeah, we just made out. It was our first date. And I was like, how do you, I never understood how someone can go on a first date with a complete stranger. And then they would like be kissing or having a whole makeout session. And I always thought that was way too early. I was like, wait, you just knew him for like an hour, two hours, and you're already making out. And maybe that makes me sound like a prude, but it's different if we were already friends or maybe we were coworkers or whatever, and then you go on a first date. And yes, of course, you might kiss then. But I always felt like those first dates with a stranger was, um, I don't know, I, I can't get into that kind of feeling so quickly. Yeah. My brain doesn't work that okay. way. But I, I wonder if other people's brain works differently. I don't know. I mean, comment below and I would love to hear about it. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Like when you were dating before, like, did you, yeah. Like my gay friend always tells me like, you know, you are such a tease because I usually, you know, I don't even kiss for three months. I have to wait <laughs> at least three months. Yeah. So, so like, you know, my friends always tease me like, you know, you are so like, you know, <laughs> uptight and all that. But then I don't want to, you know, my man to look at me for just for that reason right. so i want really so that shows me that he respect my space and right. he respect you know our kind of relationship and trying to understand each other mm -hmm. so i but that was a friend i was in the 20s and you know right. So right. i don't know if i can say that for someone who are much much older right. who has been you know going through like a divorce and you know no right. you know right. relationship but i would like to tell people you know throw is better yeah. you know if you are not just looking for just having a fun mm -hmm. if you really want to get involved with someone for long term right. then just wait and trying to and you know get to know each other right you know, much much deeper yeah. level so. Yeah, I I also don't think there's anything wrong with waiting three months before you get intimate. I mean, when you start a new job, don't they put you on a 90 day probation before you get health insurance, right? I mean, like, how can you just like hop into bed with somebody? But maybe as we get older, it's different. You know, like I, if I were to date now in my 50s, it's way different. Like if I like this guy and he likes me, yes, we might kiss on the first date. But in my 20s, I wasn't like that. So maybe as you get older, you kind of know, and you're both two consenting adults. So you would just, you know, you're safe and you know what to do. But yeah, that's, that's really interesting. Um, I mean, I've been gone on a date for like, what, at least 15 <laughs> years, because I've been with my husband for almost 15 years now. So um, I do, I do feel for the people out there dating. I mean, but there are so many ways to ask for help and get tips. And, you know, there's so much more information out there now that dating in one sense could be easier, but it can also be tougher because, you know, of all the other information out there. So 
But yeah, well, um, Miyoko, thank you so much for joining me today. I enjoy speaking with you. And I will put all your contact information um, below in the show notes, how people can find you. But um, any last words on your business or what you want to ask of the people listening? Um, go right ahead. I'll let you have a couple minutes. Yeah, I just want to say if you are looking for serious relationship, then what should I say? Like, please contact me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please contact Miyoko if you're looking for a serious relationship. Uh, she specializes in Japanese women and men of all ethnicities. I think the age range you said was anywhere from 20s to 80s, right? Like, I mean, <laughs> yes. people I need to find love. Maybe. Yeah, it doesn't matter how old you are. I feel like, right. um, I feel like, even if you're happy being alone and you're not lonely, but it's still great to have a partner to come home to or someone to check in at the end of the night or to say good morning in the mornings. I mean, yeah, I feel like a partner makes uh, everything better. Yeah. But of course, some people are happy being single too. So yeah. Well, Miyoko, thank you so much for joining me today. And if you guys like the video, subscribe, like my channel and Asian women out there, if you want to be part of my database to set you up with my male clients, go to twoasianmatchmakers.com and fill out a profile. It's free for women. And the men are the paying clients and the women join my database for free. Bye, Miyoko. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>